China may have just popped the AI bubble with their DeepSeek R1 model. In less than a week, DeepSeek's AI assistant has overtaken ChatGPT and Google Gemini in the Apple App Store for downloads, and there's also benchmarks that show DeepSeek R1 outperforming OpenAI and Anthropic Cloud's best models. Now, of course, there's all kinds of ways that you can mess with data to skew the benchmark results, so take these with a grain of salt and actually test things out yourself, like I'm gonna do at the end of this video. But what's hurting big tech the most here is that DeepSeek was really just a side project that took roughly two months of time and less than $10 million to beat out the competition. And the best part about DeepSeek is that it's actually one of the least restricted AI models in the world right now. I mean, don't get me wrong, you probably shouldn't ask DeepSeek about the Tiananmen Square massacre or why Xi Jinping looks like Winnie the Pooh, but unlike OpenAI, DeepSeek is actually open source, or at least it's open source within the context of AI models because the weights and the training procedures are open source, which should be enough for people to start reverse engineering the underlying source code of this. Hugging Face has actually created a new repo called OpenR1 for this very purpose. So make sure you keep an eye on this if you're interested in actually good open source AI. Now, the biggest stock dip after DeepSea came out has been with NVIDIA, because before OpenAI, NVIDIA was basically the lifeblood of the AI movement. All of the popular models needed huge amounts of NVIDIA graphics cards in order to function, but DeepSeek can be run on a variety of hardware. People have already managed to get the top of the line DeepSeek models running locally on clusters of M4 Mac Minis and MacBook Pros. So from what I can tell, there isn't any real vendor lock-in with this model, which means that NVIDIA's AI monopoly may have come to an end. Future models are going to use whatever hardware is going to give them the best cost to performance ratios. Of course, the people who already invested millions of dollars in NVIDIA graphics cards are gonna keep on using those for the time being. But this creates opportunities to repurpose old hardware for AI. One of the supercomputer projects that I've always been really fond of are the PlayStation clusters. The United States Air Force actually has one that's named the Condor Cluster, which is primarily used for analyzing satellite images, and it's made up of about 2,000 individual PS3 consoles. And when it was first built, it was actually the Department of Defense's fastest supercomputer in use. So this neat little fact about DeepSeek might help to reduce e-waste in the future, which I think is one of the worst side effects of big tech's greed right next to proprietary software. And this might create an opportunity for other companies to create more cost efficient AI hardware than NVIDIA. So really quick, I'm going to demo DeepSeek AI for you all on my machine, and we're going to compare it with OpenAI's ChatGPT 4.0 and their O1 preview, which as the name implies is still in preview or beta mode. So that's fine because O1 is a reasoning model, which means it should perform more similarly to DeepSeek than 4.0, but you're going to see. I'm running the DeepSeek 70 billion parameter distilled model locally with Olama on my desktop that I built with a Threadripper 3970X and an NVIDIA 4090 graphics card. But despite that, the responses can still be a little bit slow with this model. So I'm just gonna give it a prompt to work on and we'll come back in a little bit later to see how it did. But in the meantime, we're going to go over some of the earlier prompts that I've given to both DeepSeek and ChatGPT to compare how they did. So one of the first problems that I gave to both of these AIs was the classic, how many R's are in the word strawberry? And I actually gave this to the 8 billion parameter um, DeepSeek R1. So this is a even more distilled version, a simpler, smaller version than the one that I'm running right now. Uh, so ChatGPT famously got this wrong just a few months ago. Of course, ChatGPT gets it right now that there are three R's in the word strawberry. And as you can see here, the DeepSeek 
R1 model is also getting it correct that there are three R's in the word strawberry and it even gives us the correct positions in the word where the letter occurs. Next, I gave each of the AIs a word problem and this is actually where I started using the 70 billion parameter DeepSeq model and all of the questions from here on out have been given to the 70 billion model and to ChatGPT. So the word problem or really the riddle here is Johnny's mother has three kids. The first one is named Penny. The second one is named Nicole. What is the third one's name? And this riddle works best on people when you're telling it to them face to face and you do a visual misdirection, usually by placing a penny in your hand when you say penny, a nickel in your hand when you say Nicole, and then a dime or a quarter on the last kid, which makes the person focus on coming up with a name that sounds like dime or quarter. But of course, the third kid's name is Johnny. Now, both of the AIs managed to get this question right. But one of the things I really wanna point out to you here is how the newer AIs actually show you their reasoning. Sometimes you have to ask them to give you this, like ChatGPT won't always give it to you automatically. But with DeepSeek, it puts its reasoning inside of these think tags. And it's so interesting to me just how human-like this reasoning reads. I mean, it's like you printed off somebody's internal monologue. So I feel like this gives us a glimpse into just how far these models really have come with being able to see that their thought process is so similar to a human's. And because you can pretty much see how these models are thinking, that can allow you to give it better prompts, like give it better prompts so that it understands you and you're able to get the output that you actually want. Now, the next test that I gave to the AIs is actually a programming one. And oh, I scroll past it a little bit here. So I told it to generate code for a snake game that's written in Rust. Now, Mark Zuckerberg has said, and a number of other people in big tech have said, that they believe AI is already to the point that it could replace mid-level engineers. So surely a request to generate a snake game in Rust should be a cakewalk. Now with DeepSeek, <laughs> I got this really interesting result. So right inside of the think tag, it says, okay, the user wants me to generate Rust code for a snake game, but I'm not very familiar with Rust. So this tells me that DeepSeek and the Chinese probably haven't been training their AI on that much Rust code because I don't think I've ever gotten something like this, just saying I'm not familiar with insert programming language from any other models when I've asked them to produce code. Uh, now again, the AI is figuring out in a very similar way to how a programmer would how it's going to go about doing this. And it even finds things that it might need clarification on. Uh, so when we go down here, it's talking about the libraries and stuff like that, but then it has a little bit of a snag, but wait, the user might want a graphical game. So here it's debating with itself a little bit, whether to create a full graphical version of the snake game or to just create a terminal based version of it. It's also debating about whether it should use libraries like Snake Game or whether it should try to build something from scratch. And then eventually it comes to the conclusion that it's going to use Rust SDL2 crate in order to do this. Now, typically, I don't recommend people who are novice developers or people who are just starting to learn how to program to use these AI tools or to go too crazy with using a bunch of different plugins and stuff like that in their IDEs that do too much handholding. But I think this part here where the AI is telling you how it's going to go about completing a problem could help you catch these edge cases before you start. And it can really help you plan out how you would go about making the game. So if you're a novice, it might be a good idea to ask DeepSeek or ChatGPT to generate the code for you, but then don't actually look at any of the generated code, just look at the plan for how to go about actually writing the code. Uh, so it ends up using the SDL library, and this is the code that it output here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and open this up in my IDE. So this is DeepSeek's 
snake game. And as you can see, there are a few issues with it. Uh, so first off, when it uh, does these crate imports, it imports duration, but it never actually ends up using this uh, duration. So it's got an unnecessary import, but that's not a huge problem. That's not gonna stop the uh, game from compiling, but some of these problems down here where you see the red X does. So it, there's no method named renderer that's found for this struct, and there's a couple other similar issues to that. So it seems like DeepSeek is uh, having some problems with understanding the SDL2 library. So sure enough, if I go to run this, it doesn't actually run and you can't actually play the snake game because it won't even compile. Now, ChatGPT didn't give any complaints or any warnings about not being very familiar with Rust code. Uh, it ended up using the piston window crate for graphics instead of SDL2, and it didn't end up using any unnecessary uh, crates or doing any unnecessary imports. It basically is just using piston, window, and rand. And ChatGPT's code actually does work. So let's bring it up in my IDE here. And um, you can see that there are no errors that are getting detected by the IDE. So there aren't any hard errors, but I'll go ahead and run uh, this game for you. The code's also quite a bit longer too. So we have 163 lines of code. Whereas um, DeepSeeks, that doesn't even work, has 115, but you probably could get this working and end up having the source code still be smaller than ChatGPT's. Uh, but anyway, ChatGPT's code isn't perfect either. So if I do a cargo run, you see that it does indeed run. And if I run my snake, which is the green square into a wall, it's game over and that's what it's supposed to do unless you designed it so that when you go all the way over to the left side, it automatically warps you back onto the opposite side. But one of the other key components of a snake game is that when I eat that red square, the food, I'm supposed to get bigger and I don't, I just end up dying. So there actually is <laughs> a bug in both of these models code. And it's not like neither of these just don't know how to code at all. Like I've seen people generate snake games in Python without any issues, and I've even done that myself. It's just that uh, for some reason, it seems like AI is getting filtered by Rust a little bit. So I guess if <laughs> at your job, if you're wearing programming socks on a daily basis, your career might be a little bit more safer from AI than some of the other engineering folk out there. Now, this last test is something that I came up with myself as a multi-step problem that would actually be more practical to ask an AI about. So let's say that you're a German national that's on holiday in the United States, and you want to ship a package that you bought there back to your home. So you measure your package, of course, in meters because you're using the metric system. But when you go to a U.S. post office, they end up using feet or maybe just inches for the package limits. So you take your metric package measurements and you've got the imperial package measurements. And now you want to ask the AI if your package can be shipped. Now, First, the AI converts all of the measurements from metric to inches or vice versa, which is a pretty easy thing to do. Uh, but I threw in a little bit of a trick here, which is that for the length, width, and height, the way that our package is currently oriented, it would be too wide for it to ship. So the AI also has to figure out how to orient this package in 3D space so that it could ship. Now, one thing I do wanna point out is that until I actually told the AIs that they could flip or rotate or reorient the package in some way, both of them were getting stumped on the problem, both ChatGPT uh, and DeepSeek. Once I gave ChatGPT the prompt that it could reorient the package, it figured it out. It figured out that it had to change, uh, I think, the width to the height and, of course, height to width, and then the length would stay the same. Uh, but DeepSeek still can figure that out. Oh, we're going into the next question. Um, yeah, 
DeepSeek's conclusion is, unfortunately, your package exceeds the standard maximum width allowed by the post office, and it cannot be shipped via standard services without exceeding side limits. Consider using a different shipping method or carrier that accommodates larger packages. Um, and it even tried to think out of the box to figure it out a little bit. Um, somewhere, I think it said, uh, yeah, it's assuming that it's a single item that can't be split, so it's kind of defeating its own idea that, oh, we can't break this down into smaller packages. Um, and it wonders, like, is it possible that the package could be compressed in some way or bent? And of course, that's not an option either. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, DeepSeek was not able to pass this test that ChatGPT was. And it looks like from this last question, I just asked it here that it was able to detect that it's a self-referential question and that there probably isn't really an answer. Uh, but let's scroll down to the conclusion and see what it came up with, uh, if there even is one. So it says that the probability of randomly selecting the correct answer from the given options is 50%. This conclusion takes into account that two options, A and C, present the same value, effectively doubling the chance of picking a correct answer. So DeepSeek focuses really heavily here on the two 25% answers, A and C, and it's pretty much assuming that these are one of the correct answers. Now it does go through the whole like paradox discovery um, up here, but it seems like it really wants to go with the correct option being D, 50%, because the correct answer would be either A or C. Um, but it looks like ChatGPT's O1 actually thinks this through a little bit more thoroughly. So the short answer at the bottom here is that it's a paradox and there is no consistent correct choice, but it does go through all of the different possibilities. So if the correct answer were 25%, there's two choices that are labeled 25%. If you pick an option at random, then there's a two in four chance that you're going to get that. And that means if 25% were correct, you'd actually have a 50% chance of picking it because two options say 25%. And, but it's not actually 25%, so there's a contradiction there. Uh, and then we have a similar thing where if the correct answer were 50%, you'd have a one in four, 25% chance of choosing that single 50% option, but that contradicts the claim that the correct probability is 50%. And then you'd never be able to pick uh, the correct answer if you were choosing randomly, but you do have a one in four chance to pick the 0% option, which would make it 25%, not 0% contradiction again. Uh, so it seems like ChatGPT was more sure about this being a complete contradiction, whereas DeepSeek kind of thought that there really was some kind of correct way to answer this question. So it seems to me like DeepSeek is not necessarily better than the American AI, like I've seen so many people saying, but the fact that you can run it locally and it gets so close in performance to ChatGPT does make it a much better project in my opinion. And I really hope that adjustments can be made to DeepSeek's reasoning weights in order to remove any Chinese censorship that was put in it. But I've gotta say, this is my favorite AI project to date. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my stylish merch, accessories for your phone or laptop, or a new computer that maybe you could run DeepSeek on. Okay, you probably can't run DeepSeek successfully on this, but there is a 10% discount on all products sold on base.win when you pay a Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.